Another special edition live stream, J. Ellis, CP from Knicks Fan TV, my man J. Ellis from Nick of Time Show, special guest J. Ellis, special, special. he's an NBA champion, <laughs> multi-time all-star, former Nick, <laughs> yeah. Rashid Wallace, ball don't lie, yeah. let's ball don't get lie, it. Damn it, yes sir, yes sir, <laughs> Rashid Wallace, welcome to the show man, thanks for coming through man, how you feeling tonight? Man, no doubt. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me, man. Feeling feeling pretty good, you know, minus this whole COVID-19 thing. And I hope everybody out there, up there in the New York area, take it serious and, and stay safe, man. Yeah, man. We definitely yeah. appreciate you taking the time and, you know, providing a, a welcome distraction to the people, especially people that's, that's dealing with a lot of heavy stuff on their mind right now. So, oh, um, no doubt. Before we get started, salute to everybody in the chat. Hit that thumbs up button for your boys. You know the protocol. Tonight's hashtag, Jay Ellis, of course. Ball don't lie. So throw a ball, ball don't, don't lie in the chat. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> to salute she and JL. Let's just go ahead and kick it off, man. Yeah, man. All right. So she used the Boston, used with the Boston Celtics in uh, 2009 and 2010 and he ended up retiring. And for some reason, you came back to the Knicks, signed a one year deal. Can you remember mm -hmm. that conversation you had that, that lead you to coming out of retirement and joining us? Oh, yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, I had to retire early because uh, my mother fell ill in 2010, right after that game seven with L.A. So, oh, man. you know, my dudes, that's that's number one. So oh, yeah, I just absolutely. had the Knicks, you know, the whole the whole NBA contract. I left a lot of money on the table, but you only get one my dudes money come and go. Absolutely. But I definitely remember, um, you know, just getting a call from Mike Woodson. And at first, real talk, at first it was just, you know, to come up and work with the guys during training camp and, you know, to try to push them coming more from a, from a, uh, I guess, a coach's aspect side of it. But oh, then, so he's you. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. No doubt. I mean, and, and I was still with it. I was still with it because I wanted to play too. So I ain't even going to lie. I ain't even going to hold you and try to say it was all Mike, but I definitely wanted to play. And it was a chance to play for the Knicks. You know, when I was in high school, I was a Knicks fan because I grew up watching Patrick Ewing with me being in Philly. Let's go. Hey. Salute to the general number 33. Of course. <laughs> no of course. I grew up watching PE in the Big East. And so he's always been, you know, my my number one guy. Because I looked at him like, okay, he's tall like me. He's a hell of an athlete. And I always saw him on TV. You know, he's a black guy. I always saw him on TV every weekend playing basketball. So I was a big PE fan and you know, just that team and that grit that, that they had, you know what I'm saying? With with Charles Oakley out there, and then mm. you had you had D Harper out there on Dan that Harper, wing. The hand you know, check yeah. it was some grit. Aunt, yeah. Aunt Mason, you know, yeah, it was yeah, it was sir. grit and grime out there. True and I, I loved it. And when Mike hit me with that, I was like, yo, word. I'm, I said, all right, no doubt. Yeah. I'm I'm there with it. I don't I don't mind doing this. You know, this is kind of sort of like a dream come true to play for one of the teams that I grew up watching that that makes a lot of sense because now i think about it your, your, your game kind of patterns a lot after hewing with the little turnaround post-up moves and everything that makes a lot of sense <laughs> actually now i really really think about it um how hard was it for you to come back from retirement into like getting into the flow of the game um it wasn't too hard it wasn't too hard because the the determination was there and mm -hmm. that's 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 more than half of it you know you have to be determined you have to want it and I definitely wanted it. It's just the fact that once I did come back and get into that flow, man, that's when I broke my foot and yeah. shit was downhill since. Yeah. She, yeah. When, when, when you got to MSG, man, I was at this game, Knicks versus Heat opening night. You know, one of the things I loved about that season was that how we matched up so well with the Heat. And, yeah, man. And that night, the Garden is mm -hmm. chanting your name. It's the first game of the season. Like, what do you remember about that MSG moment for you, man? Oh, just sitting there, uh, the atmosphere, bro. And for the first time, being on that side of the benches right. in, in MSG, you know what I mean? But it was just the, the atmosphere. It was so thick. And it's just like like everybody was ready. It was, a, it was an eruption that we were all waiting for. And I'm just sitting there, you know, throughout the game. Hey, the vet, look, young fella, do this, do that. Watch how I'm doing this. Watch how he doing that, blah, blah, blah. You know, just, just trying to be the old head out the crew. And then um, we were up, 
and you know, I'm sitting on the bench, and that's when Woody looked down the bench. He's like, he came down and was like, "Hey, you want to go in?" And and you know, I'm I'm gonna be a vet and professional. I'm not gonna stand my man up, even though we already had the game one. Yeah, I'm not gonna stand my man up. Like, nah, I'm good. I'm no, I'm not. I'm not a prima donna superstar like that or nothing. So I'm like, yeah, for sure, no doubt. <laughs> Threw off the sweats and everything. And <laughs> mean, back it was, to it. The legend was on. Get yeah, the legend to it. was on. Yeah, man. The garden loves that too, man. The garden loves loves the 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 vet that comes in and just he can get the minutes, but he makes the most out. Yeah, the garden loves mm-hmm. that. Stuff. The garden oh, loves God. that. Yeah. Okay. So you know what? Um, you gotta tell us something, she, because you had an impact on this team. Mello to this day still Third does MVP voting, man. Yeah, still does the three to the dome to this day, <laughs> to this day. So tell me where the three to the dome come from. Like, what's the origin story? <laughs> um, I mean, it came from practice. Uh, it came from practice one day and, you know, we were going back and forth at it and guys is just talking shit and, hey, I'm better than you. And, and I mean, it wasn't like personal, you know, just that team camaraderie. Yeah. And just, you know, just like, basic junk talking. So when I'm in practice, I knew it wasn't a lot of plays for me, which was fine. I didn't have a problem with, you know, I knew I was lifted out there on the wing, but if you swing that joint my way, I'm going to put that bitch up. <laughs> 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 and, and, you know, it was a couple of times, hit a couple of threes and it was just three to the dome. And the funny thing about it, like in schoolyard ball, we all know what this means. You know what I'm saying? As far as like, all right, when you hold up to three, you hit a shot, you hold up to three, and you know, or you just hit a big three. That's school yeah. yard, that's trash talk. So yeah. that's the same thing that I did. Now, when I was in Boston uh, in 2010, every time I made a three, I would hold the three up and, you know, it's kind, of, kind of sort of do the Kirk, <laughs> the Kirk, Kirk Gibson, Gibson and, <laughs> um, and tuck it in, you know what I mean? So when I was up there, I was like, you know, just got to try to do something that's, that's, funny and and that everybody likes. So I came up with three to the dome. Then the few minutes that I did get in some of the games and I made a shot, NBA hit me like, yo, you got to stop doing that. I'm oh, like, what? Man. They're like, cause they, they thought it was one, a gang sign. Yeah. And yeah. two, Come they on. thought that I was trying to represent, I'm going to shoot you in your head. And I said, nah, I said, what it is. I said, it's no different from dunking on somebody. Right. When you don't want to do, boom, what you do, ah, you all in this grill, right? I said, well, with the three, it ain't really an emphatic shot or or a physical shot. So it's just the, you know, and I make it like, yeah, hey, three to the dome. I just hit you with a three-pointer upside the head. So three to the dome. And then after that, they after I explained it to them, they was like, all right, they stopped messing with me with it. They thought it was some type of gang signs and all this other stuff. I'm like, nah, I ain't, I ain't live, living like that. <laughs> we, we're talking to She Wallace. Throw that yeah, ball, man. don't lie, in the, in the chat. Also a host, Jay Ellis, of his own podcast, the Lex to Get Technical Podcast, featuring yes, Bonzi sir. Wells with She Wallace and my guy, Gerald Brown. So make sure you guys check them out and subscribe on Definitely. all the major podcast platforms. Um, she, you know, sure. you, you only spent 25 games with this team. Unfortunately, you had hurt your foot, but this team, this was a different team. You know, we have been so used yeah. to Knicks losing mm-hmm. and, and this team will end up going on to win 54 <laughs> games. Um, what did you feel like, you know, when you told Woodson, you were going to come back, what did you feel like you were going to bring to the team that kind of helped them, you know, get off to that good start and, and had a good season? Um, just basically that, that big man leadership of, mm. of being down there in them trenches and, and, you know, working with the young guys had a chance to work with stat, excuse me. And, um, and just, just working with, with him and Tyson down there on them blocks and just sharing my knowledge pretty much of, of the things that I've been through, just trying to help them become better in, in certain game situations. Cause we knew that they were going to get all of the minutes. I wasn't tripping on that. I should actually was kind of happy with it. So, mm. You know, I wasn't tripping on it too much with them getting all of the minutes. So just look, hey, well, this is what I learned when you're guarding so and so. Yeah, he liked to do the little shimmy, and he, he want to shoot it off the glass, or he want to go left for the layup, go right, he gonna pull up, whatever. And it was just sharing that knowledge, and that was that was a pretty good team. And as we were yeah. rolling, in my opinion, as we were rolling, I kind of sort of felt like 
like the nineties Knicks, you know what I mean? Mm. That, that was playing them bulls and, and playing against playing against them Pacers, you know, right. just that toughness cause we had a veteran ball yeah, club, yo. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh my yes, God. Sir. The big men were crazy um, on our mm. Kurt, shout out <laughs> my guy Kurt Thomas, man. Yeah, we're looking Kurt, for Kurt Kennedy. 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 Jason Kidd, Kenya Come Martin. Come oh, on. oh man, that was a trip. You know what, she man, I felt like you you could have really been the equalizer on that on that Pacers series, man, because Big we facts. needed somebody mm -hmm. to to really. Roy Hibbert was just going crazy, and we needed somebody <laughs> to bring him outside yeah, a little get him bit. Out of the paint. You know, Tyson was a little bit banged up. He he had a rough series, but For sure. we, we needed somebody to to be that Hibbert equalizer, man. But we we glad you got to to don the Knicks uniform at least once. Mm -hmm. But um, oh, back, no doubt, me too. Yeah, and and, and but. In 04, before you got to Detroit, you know, there was some heavy rumors that Isaiah was was after you. Your agent, Bill Strickland, was in the papers basically saying that, uh, you know, he that New York was your preference to be traded um, from Portland. H how true were those rumors back then? Um, yeah, no, it was true. Because as, as I said, you know, growing up at the time, that's when um, uh, the Knicks had, had made the chip. You had, you had Spree. Um, MC for the first time, mm -hmm. LJ. Oh you yeah. You know what I'm saying? You you had a it was a it was a good squad, a good nucleus, and I felt as though that I could have been a good fit. Oh man. For the for the ruggedness <laughs> yeah. of that team, you know what I'm saying? Playing up there in the garden in in New York at the time, but of course, you know that that was where I wanted to go, and it always doesn't work out like that. So yeah. Yeah. The road that I travel, you know, hey, I ain't bitching about it. Yeah, it, it, it was a <laughs> golden road indeed, man. Yeah, because no man. Doubt. once no you doubt. got to Detroit, and you know, I was telling when when you got to Detroit, and you know, all the hype was around the Lakers and the super team and Carmelo and Gary Payton. Yo, I told my homies back then, mm -hmm. Jay, I was in high school, I was like, yo, she yeah. is a missing piece. Yes, yeah, Detroit rap. is gonna see the Lakers yeah. in the finals and they're gonna beat them. When yeah. you guys finally, mm -hmm. when you guys won that chip. Did it mean more to you that you got past the Lakers? Because like your Portland days, they had your number and it was always Kobe and Shaq, always Kobe and Shaq getting to you. Like, did you feel like, you know, you finally got them when, when you won that championship? I, I did. I did, to be honest. I felt like it was a it was a huge gorilla off of my back on, on both shoulders, to be exactly. Um, you know, it's when I was out there in Portland and we had good Portland teams. You know, we were beating a lot of the dominant East Coast team. So you saw the promised land, like the vision was there. You know, we, we sitting there, the vision was there, but we just couldn't get by Shaq at that time, in my opinion, was the best athlete oh, on yeah. the planet. Because here dominant. you are, 7'2", seven, 7'3", seven, and you're mobile and you're running as fast as you do. And with Kobe, we all know what type of great player Kobe is. Rest in peace, Kobe. Rest in peace, but Kobe. Yeah, rest in peace. It was, it was, it was those two. They, they were my thorn in my side for sure. And when I got to Detroit, and I saw that they were building up that team before I got there. You know, you mm -hmm. saw the yeah. uh, GP join. You know, you saw Mailman join. So now you're like, oh man. Like they were already good. Now you're gonna add two more hawks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm like, damn. So then when I finally did get traded, and it was just a feeling I felt, man, when we was in that locker room after like I would say after our maybe third or fourth game we played together, that's when I knew we were gonna do something special. Still and now I, I'm not gonna say I thought we were gonna win it, but I knew we were gonna do something special because it was just our communication. It's mm -hmm. like we, we were playing for years together. Yeah. And yeah. it's only been a couple of weeks. So, and that made me think, and that that put my basketball IQ to a higher plateau in my book by playing with other great guys where I didn't have to say to you, hey, ACP, uh, you make sure that you get down there and block him out and blah, 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 blah. And you mm -hmm. didn't have to say to me, hey, she, make sure you block him out, get this route. No, everybody it was, was already it was already there. It was already a unspoken word. Mm, that's and the, that camaraderie, that brotherhood. Once we came together, we did everything together out there in Detroit, man. Mm. And that's what I love because it was just like for real, for real. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna hold you. It was just like Portland. In Portland, that's dope. Yeah, they call this gel blazers, all this other shit, this and that. But we had a family atmosphere. 
Mm. Guys were going over other guys' house. Like I would come over your house to, let's say, watch the fight. Mm -hmm. You would come over my house for Halloween parties, or you know, another player would have this. And but everybody in the family, everybody was interacting. You know, any if we didn't. That's why we didn't have any problem. Yeah, like chemistry Detroit, was I seamless. I have to say, yeah, man, chemistry Detroit, was seamless. We man. we was there. No, like I wasn't jealous or nervous mm. or hating on any of those guys you know oh man he think he this or even off of the court oh man yeah he got this he got a bentley or you know he got a rose he mm -hmm. think he that he think he this nah it wasn't none of that it no was ego it was all of us as young black men young black fathers and that two came together we just meshed it all as one snowball that, that's dope, man. That's dope. We talking to Rashid Wallace. Throw that ball, don't lie, in the chat to salute Sheed. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Um, Sheed, you know, you had mentioned the, the late, great Kobe Bryant. Um, do you remember the last conversation you had with him? Um, I would probably say for me, the last convo or, you know, a few words that I share with Kobe was... Uh, before and or after that game seven when I was with Boston. Mm. You know, when I when I came back with, with the Knicks, uh, it was just more of a, a, of a high and by, you know, mm -hmm. it was a respect level. Um, we didn't, it wasn't the best where we like always hanging out, but it was a respect level. He knew me, I knew him. He knew my family, I know his family, you know what I mean? And, and it was, it was, it was a good moment, man. You yeah. know, just looking back at it now, of course, wishing that he was still here. You yeah. never want to see a, a young brother lead his earth too soon. But um, I think he still could have did a lot for the game of basketball. Yeah. So yeah. Um, terrible and, and untimely tragedy for sure, man. Yeah. Um, there's yeah. there's another member of the of the Pistons staff. He's currently the GM of the Knicks. Um, and Scott Perry. They did. What, what was your relationship like with Scott Perry back in those days? That's that's my man, SP the Ghost. I'm telling you, man. Um, <laughs> Scott, Scott, that's my that's my man. Good dude. Um, you know, he was up under Joe Dumars during that time. Um, he went out and ventured on his own a little bit here and there, and now he's sitting up there in the biggest uh, media circus in the world. And I think you know Scott's holding it down. He's gonna hold it down with his demeanor. You know, he's not gonna be. Um, over exuberant about trying to make moves and and do this and do that. No, he's gonna sit back and he's going to assess everything that's in front of him and then make his decision. Scott Scott's a good guy, man. You know, I yeah. think that that was a good hire by Dolan to uh, bring him aboard, and he's just gonna look at it. It's gonna take some time. Might take a knot or two across the head, but <laughs> coming from a winning well winning background, yo, that's what that's what it takes to get there. True story, man. Well, yeah. Leon Rose gave him gave him one more year here, so let's see how they uh, how yeah. they gel together in that front office. Go ahead, Jails. Yeah, for sure. So, back in the Detroit days, I know malice in the palace happened, and it, it, it was kind of nice. <laughs> it's, it's crazy because people expect you know Rashi Wallace Jailblazers to be this big, but you was kind of the peacemaker in Malice in the Palace. Can you tell us about you know that day? And, and just the feel of what happened in the locker room after Malice in the Palace happened? Um, well, when it all went down, my thing was like, look, this between Ben, and at the time, his name was Ron Artest before he changed the meta. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. this this is between them. Yeah. If they going to square off, all right, they going to square off. Ain't nobody else going to jump in it. You know, it's kind of sort of like street rules. Street rules yeah. one on one. <laughs> Yo, even, even if I'm getting my ass beat, don't jump in it. You know what I mean? So with that, that's how I saw it. But then when all the scuffling and pushing and everything started, and then, you know, you had a couple of fans that, that got uh, uh, too excited and came down there on the court and tried to fight and push around some of the players. Yeah, that was crazy, man. And seeing, I already knew what it was going to be with, with my, my young boys, Steve Jack and Ron, when they went up into the stands. Mm -hmm. I already yeah. knew what it was going to be. And I went up in the stands more to help the people yeah, opposing to them because for real, for real, if they could have got their hands like they wanted to 
on some of those people at that during that situation. Yeah, Steve yeah. Jackman. They, they still be paying man. for it, yo. Cat Tony Jack was in there throwing haymakers in the crowd. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. They, they probably would have got banned from the league or something. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? If, if it was a real serious injury to a fan, they probably would have banned them, you know, from the league, like current Washington. So yeah, true. I was like, look, let me go up here. And, and my thing, I was like, I ain't care. You know, my thing, my bigger project was to try to just get them, yo, come on, let's go. Let's go back. Yeah, y'all on yeah. the opposite team, but y'all still my little brothers. Yeah. Yo, come on, let's go back. It's it's a basketball thing now. So after Ron and Ben, you know, had their little push and match. I'm like, look, it's 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 us. It's us. We don't need to be up there fighting. Yeah, we can go ahead and handle this thing right here. If they want to scrap, let them scrap. Yeah. Mm. Let them scrap. Sometimes I wish I wish we could do in basketball what they do in hockey. Yeah. <laughs> Just let it go. A little 20 it. seconds, man. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? But but it was it was that that malice in the palace, and then you know afterwards in the locker room, you know we're, we're, guys were just hype and and we was like, man, we don't believe this, and all this happened, and we were sitting back laughing at a little bit of it, but <laughs> we knew the the seriousness of it from our teammate because he was going through some things, talking about Ben at that time with his fam and everything, you mm. know, his brother's passing, so you yeah. know you're 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 emotional. Yeah. So, you know, we just looked at the brighter side of it. Once we got in that locker room, you know, we started making our little jokes and this and that to try to, to try to get the brighter side of that whole little mischievous event. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's interesting how you bring up, you know, what happened with Ben Wallace. It's that backstory that fans never really know. We just watching it live, like, yep. yo, this is the craziest thing I ever seen. But yeah. if you kind of peel it back and understand what a player was going through that day, what happened to him that day, you mm-hmm. kind of understand, you know, why certain things happened the way it did. But um Yeah, yes. plus there was already a rivalry between those teams before True. from last season as True. well. So it's like everything's coming to a mm-hmm. head at the same time. True, <laughs> true story, man. Fact that. She, mm-hmm. your, your your Portland days, man. The Portland teams that y'all had a squad, man. You, you had Steve Smith, yourself, Detlef, Mighty Mouse, Damon Stoudemire, Pippen. You know, obviously that game seven with the Lakers was a classic, but that was a tough loss for you guys. Did winning that mm-hmm. championship in Detroit, you know, did it take the sting off that game a little bit, or does that game still stick with you just the way that you guys kind of flamed out? Uh, I would say 50-50. It's about a 50 50 thing, mm. you know, because you sit back and look at it. And of course, you know, the NBA loves the Lakers and they play that game all the damn time. <laughs> yeah. But listen, man, we, we watch you know, the last dance, that we know. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a 50 50 thing. So, like, I, I look at it as it also helped us as a team and individuals with a stepping stone. And, you know, we, we had to face that adversity with. Kobe and Shaq and and that that good bench that they had mm. and uh, good backup players that they had mm. and we had those as well but you know their two superstars was a little bit more liked than our superstars and you know they were the face of the league at the time you know to me Shaq was the face of the league when yeah. you talk about NBA for oh Shaquille O'Neal Shaquille O'Neal you know very tall you know he's, <laughs> he's the face of the league yeah Every, everywhere you go. So it, to to get by them to actually be able to get this one over them, and for me it was a big one, but for them it might not have been nothing because they got four or five already. So they got, but couple, for me yeah. it was a big one, and it was it was it was it was relief, man. Yeah, to to be able to beat that team of you you had what six Hall of Famers on that team. I think at least. So for us to beat them for these five guys and this team from Detroit that didn't have no all-stars, yeah. that, you know, weren't league darlings. They yeah. weren't really liked, and, and not only myself, they weren't really liked by the referees. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. for us to beat David Stern's dream team. <laughs> that, was, that was a reward, right? <laughs> Ooh. That 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 was that was like a trifecta for me that day. Cause not only did I win a chip with my brothers who were also struggling, I got a chance to 
see David Stern not even want to be up there on that stage to present the MVP <laughs> that is or the Larry <laughs> O'Brien trophy. And the fact that it was a little bit of, as I said, you know, that pressure release of after getting my ass beat by the Lakers for yeah. so many years out in Portland yeah. to be able to finally be on the other side of the pillow for one. Yeah, that's dope, that's man. Cool. I'm talking to Rasheed Wallace. Throw that ball. Don't yeah, lie in the up, chat. Man. Salute, Sheed. Hit that thumbs up button for your boys. <laughs> she, you know, y- your time in Portland was was also quite tumultuous. You know, you mentioned the referees. Obviously, we all know your relationship mm-hmm. with the refs. It was no secret. 40-something technicals in a season at, at some <laughs> point. You know, you mentioned the whole jail blazers, um, Monica that they gave you guys, and, and other, you know, personal issues. What do you feel like the life lesson, uh, what, what do you think that you learned from that time that kind of made you a better person even today? Um, how business go. Because that's what it's all about, business. Mm. It's all about them dollars. You know, once with, with, with me playing in the league, once my vision of, okay, this is my actual job. You know, the 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 game is over. You know, you grow up high school, young boy in the schoolyard, you know what I mean? All that, okay, you're playing it for the fun of it. But somewhere after your first few years, no matter win or lose, this game is your job. It, it's not just that game game anymore. It's... Mm your job now. And so with, with me looking back and, and looking over my career at that, I would say that's one of the lessons that I learned early because with me coming in the league in 95, here yeah. it is, okay, I'm thinking, you know, well, to my knowledge, it didn't happen before. I mean, it happened before, but I didn't know because I was, I was ignorant to the fact of a whole, you know, striking and the CBA, the collective bargaining agreement, whatever. But mm-hmm. when it happened to us in 98 and that whole 98, 99 season and sitting back looking at it like, yo, mm. like, this is the business. Yeah. You yeah. know, with, with all of these sponsors, you got not only your national sponsors for these teams and these players, but your local sponsors. You know, it's, it's a commercials that guys film that probably would never made national but you know that's that that's that whole local fever yeah yeah so it's it's just a big business and that's what i learned early and that's why i had to treat it that way treat it as such cool all right so so see you you had a long career in the nba so I, i would like to know personally like who are your toughest matchups like so, you not, it was a lot of dope big men. There's a lot of guys. There's a lot of us. You had KG, your kid. You had uh, That's the first that Duncan. You had Chris Webber. You had Shaq, of course. Mm-hmm. I mean, you name it, man. Oh, bro. Let me tell you. I was my younger days off the bat. It was it was Terry Cummings. Wow. <laughs> Former Nick, right. former Nick, Terry Cummins was <laughs> Nick at one point. Man, I couldn't do <laughs> Nathan with him. <laughs> Nothing. But learning how to play the game, talking to some vets, you know, I overcame that. But when talking about, like, my biggest matchups, I would have to say it's three dudes during my time when I was playing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In no particular order, it was KG, big ticket. It was big fundamentals with Tim Duncan. Yeah. And J50, Jermaine O'Neal. Those three guys. Former teammate. When when I was facing them, yeah, I'm I'm going to bed at a at a reasonable time the night before. <laughs> I want to make sure that, you know, I'm energized. You know, I can't I can't be half assing or dragging nah, with these guys. I can't be halfway drunk and and trying to play against these guys. No, I'm getting my ass handed to me. Go ahead. I'm turning in early tonight, fellas. Yeah, we go out tomorrow. Or we go out, you know what I'm saying, the next city on a road trip when I got to go against someone who isn't as capable of beating us as these guys are. Yeah, especially KG, man, because KG will do it and talk so much. 
<laughs> okay. And I love it. And I love it. That's that's what I love. I love the fact that that ticket talk shit. You know, you got to talk shit in this game because that's what we grew up with, man. Yeah. You know, you grew up in the schoolyards, no matter. I don't care what hood you from, East Coast, West Coast, Midwest. You from Chicago, Oakland, damn Miami, wherever. You gonna be on that basketball court talking shit. That's a fact. <laughs> true story. A, true true story. story, man. Now she, you also coaching your high school at, at, at Jordan High, man, and coaching basketball. How yes, did sir. that end up happening? Like, what what got you interested in in coaching at the high school level? Well, I would definitely have to say what what got me started with it was my high school coach. And just the, the the father figure that he was to me when I was a young boy, you know, looking for some guidance from that older male figure outside of my brothers. Mm. So coming back, like, okay, I like coaching in the NBA. Yeah, that's cool. But it's a, it's a different feeling because you're dealing with guys who already got paid. You, your dream has already happened with you making the NBA and you're making money. But everybody that's playing in the NBA now, ain't trying to win mm. that's the difference mm. so with with the me coaching my high school guys it just set me back you know like looking at it from my coach's uh viewpoint or standpoint bill ellerby's standpoint from trying to help these young guys not only is it helping with basketball but life mm. you know and and to this day my uh, my high school coach, Bill Ellerby, he's one of my mentors. And I still ask him questions about it to this day. Now, mm -hmm. I love coaching my guys out there, Jordan, man. You know, we're not the most talented team, but I say we have we had the biggest heart, man. The guys on my team, they, they're not quitters. That's you know, we're, we're going out there fighting. We didn't have no height on our team this year. The tallest guy on our team, I think he might have been like maybe 6'4". Mm -hmm. So, but – God's determination and we ended up having a losing record overall 11 and 13 but the silver lining in that we won 10 more games I mean excuse me nine more games than what they did the year before and that's how we got to take away from it just little individual things and for me to be coaching them now and affecting their lives Mm. I, I like that affecting their lives for the positive. Yeah, I like that. Uh, yeah. That sounds like a very yeah. um, rewarding experience. Now you also played for some legendary coaches, man. The legendary Dean Smith of North Carolina. Yeah. You know Larry Brown. You won a championship with Larry Brown. Also a former Tar Heel. Um, did you take anything from them as you you know kind of applied it to to Jordan High? Um, yes, I did, and I think it was more of that of that family atmosphere. When I was in high school, we did it. We, my, my coach had the layout of, okay, we're going to do everything together. Um, at times when we go to different tournaments or throughout the summer, we're going to eat together. We're going to play year round, all of us on the same team. Yeah, you can play for your neighborhood, you know, summer league team or this and that, but we're all going to play together in certain summer leagues. So that helped us grow and add on. And then with, with just the overall aspect of the view of the game, my high school coach to me is one of the best ever. And then playing for the legendary Dean Smith, Dino, you know, his, his basketball mentality, this, this, the godfather of the four corners, mm -hmm. um, you know, just his insight and, and the way that he worked just made it different. Mm. And not in a bad way. It just made it different. Like, like Coach Smith, the biggest thing, I guess, for me that I tried to wrap my fingers around is how you have a team full of McDonald's All-Americans and you keep everybody in check. Check, keep them together, yeah. Yeah, keep the egos. You know what I mean? Egos. Yeah, yeah. And it's like everybody. And, and I played with a lot, of, a lot of good players at Carolina mm -hmm. for them two years. But it was no egos. All the egos was checked at the door. And then playing for Larry Brown, coming from mm. that Carolina background, that Coach Smith background, you know, playing for him, it was it was easy. It was it was easy and hard in the same breath. Mm. I say it was easy for basketball-wise because okay, a lot of his plays I already knew. 
And, mm-hmm. you know, the whole secondary offense, that secondary fast break, mm-hmm. it was something that we always did at Carolina. And sitting here and watching him, and he's 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 like a mad scientist, bro. Mm. Larry Brown is a mad scientist. All he do is eat, sleep, breathe, and shit basketball. All right? <laughs> That's all Larry yes. Brown do. He should have worked when he came with the Knicks. Hey, yeah, wish it would have worked out here. He should have worked when he got. Maybe I, he should have been here when he was here. It made, it made a difference. I think if, which, he, if he would have been here a little bit longer, you know, of course, yeah. like like the way that it is up there right now in New York, and it's been like that for it's some years. Man. I need to win now. Yeah. No this, patience. I, we already had our us, time man. in the doghouse. You know, we was we bullshitting for years and this and that. We weren't a good team. Let's get back to these seventies and, and how they won them championship. I need to win now. Yeah, and that was that mentality. So, but yeah. I think if if LB, if he would have been able to stay and you know finagle how he do things, that they would probably have a championship. He said the same thing. I was watching some interview. He was saying the same thing. Yeah, just recently, right? Like, he, yeah, he he just think so. Time, yeah, he mm-hmm. felt like you can't you can't expect the team to go from cellar dwellers to the league champs in a year or two. It's not going to happen. I don't care what sports you win. It ain't going to happen, yo. Yeah. Need that patience, Knicks fans. You hear that, Knicks fans in the chat? We got to be patient, man. Definitely. Definitely got to be patient. Speaking of coaching, too, I I know Mitchell Robinson, who kind of gives you – he gave me a lot of praise. Shout out money, Mitch. Yeah. He had like a big game. He shouted you out. He said he, he showed him some things. Uh, he tried pushing to be a little more vocal and, and, and things like that. Uh, so I guess my question to you is, have you ever thought about coaching in the NBA? I know the Knicks need a big man coach. You know, uh, Miss has been shooting jumpers. Maybe you can give him some confidence to, to let him fly. That, that turnaround step back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Give him Fade that away, Joey. You and feel. You know? <laughs> um, no, I, 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 I wouldn't mind it. But it just has to be the right situation, okay. you know. Just just like everything else, you know. I don't want to go and, and leave the the job that I have now with helping and trying to shape and mold these young kids' future mm. to go to kids who are out here getting paid hundreds of millions of dollars who could care less about anything else. Like long as I'm getting paid, you know. Yeah, I, I don't care if I don't play. I, if I don't get these minutes, yeah, I might practice here and there, but I'm getting paid. I can live this life. You know, I don't, it's, for me, it's like, I'm playing from the heart. And and even though I know what goes on now happened back then with me as far as guys and why they're in the NBA, you got some guys in the NBA to win championships. You got some guys in the NBA for the money and, and to help them with their family situations. You got some guys in the NBA who just want to kick it and take all of the, you know, the pros that come with that as far as the jewelry, the cars, mm-hmm. you know, clubbing it and buying bottles. You never know what they in it for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But for me personally, I want to be, I, I want to play and I want to coach guys who are in it to win chips. That makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes well, what do you think about um, Tom Thibodeau? You know, you played under him as an, he was an assistant coach for that Celtics team that you were on. His name has been very hot and, and linked to the Knicks. What do you think about Tom Thibodeau coaching in a rebuilding type of situation? Well, first, they're going to have to get good mics. Cause this is how it's going. <laughs> 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 Yo, get cough drops on that for yeah. sure. He's going to be yelling doubt. at Kev all day. Man. Calls hey. all day in the hallway. <laughs> I, had, I had the pleasure of, of playing – for Tibbs when he was part of that Boston coaching staff when we went to the finals um, in 2010. Uh, his defensive scheme is, is something that you definitely have to buy into. Hmm. You know, um, if, if you buy into it, it works. If you have any type of skepticism, it, it's not gonna work. You know, because hmm. then you're gonna question, well, why you gotta do this? Or why do I have to be here when my man is, no, it's gonna question. So I think he, he's, a, he's a good defensive mind. But the question is, if Tom Thibodeau was a coach in New York, would they give him time? And see, that goes back to what I said a second ago about New York fans. Like, look, I'm tired of waiting. I've been waiting. Yeah. You know, I, I was salivating at the glands when we made it 
to the finals with, you know, Pat Ewing and that Latrell Sprewell squad. I, in Marchtown, I'm salivating at the glands then. But it's been a while. It's been a drought since. Will they have the time patience. and patience to be able to believe in this coach that they hiring? Because it's not going to happen overnight, bro, at all. It's not going to happen overnight. So it all comes on, will you have that time and patience? We all believe in them. You know, everybody in New York who's a Knicks fan, what they say every year, beginning of the season, we going to win it this year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, we delusional. Love. See, we delusional, yeah. man. It's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> but it's that it's that love of, of die hard, bro. That's it, man. It's like a die hard fan. And that's those are the fans that you love. That's why even with some losing seasons or them not making a playoff, they still selling out. Still here. Yeah, man. Still, still here, selling man. out. Absolutely. So, you know, you got to look at it from both sides of that of that coin. Absolutely, man. A um, couple more questions for you, She. We definitely appreciate no you doubt. taking the time out. Salute to everybody in the chat. Hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Throw a ball, don't lie, mm -hmm. in the chat to salute Please Rasheed do. Wallace. In here dropping gems on us, Jay Ellis. Um, yeah, Sheeta, you know, someone had called my show earlier this week and we were talking about Tibbs and the coaching candidates. And one of the names, somebody you're very familiar with, Jerry Stackhouse, man. What, what do you think about Stackhouse as a potential candidate? You know, he's done fairly well with the Raptors G League squad. He's yep. down at Vanderbilt mm -hmm. now doing his thing. Uh, what, what do you make of Jerry kind of progressing through the ranks of coaching? Uh, I think that would be great for Stack. It would be great. You know, here it is again. You're in the biggest media uh, uh, hub in the world, so that itself would make you want to prep and step on step on the stage. Mm. So I think I think Stack could do a good job, but there again, as as we all just mentioned, how much patience do the front office have? How much patience do the city have? That's what it comes down to. You know, they can, real talk, they can go out there and even though they already did it and he don't want to be part, he didn't want to be part of it, Phil Jackson. <laughs> you know, like like when, I think when, when New York got Phil Jackson, they were like, it's time. Here we go, it's time. Yeah. You know, coming sad, off of what he did. Man. And in LA and Chicago, you know, but it didn't work like that. You yeah, know what I, I mean? I, yeah, I, I definitely think we were blind to it. Even though he didn't have that that experience as a president, I, I think we were, right. you know, naive to kind of think that that magic could be recreated. Um, but you know, for a lot of reasons, it definitely didn't work yeah. out. Yeah, naive a lot of times it seems. <laughs> but, uh, but it's, it's going to happen. It's gonna yeah, it's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. Hopefully. While I'm alive. All right, so <laughs> all right, so so I need to speak to something. I need to speak to the New York culture. So in New York, we have this culture, right, where we 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 like to rock fresh Air Force Ones and Tim's. But you, you sir, I heard you play in Air Force Ones. <laughs> Legend, legendary tales. Yeah, let, and practice in Tim's. Can you tell me? Like the rationale, of the thought process. <laughs> well, what are, what are, what are the, Air Force Ones comfortable to play in? I mean, they must have been for you. Oh yeah, no doubt they, they were. Now, now, granted, Air Force Ones ain't got no type of uh, uh, foot sole support. Facts. Nothing. So that's, so that's Ice why, skates. <laughs> but if 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 you ask ninety nine percent of the guys who play professional sports, mainly basketball, got orthotics. Yeah. So I have a foot insole that was molded to my foot. So once I slipped it in that air, tie that thing up, I'm good. good <laughs> to me, Air Force One was a, a true high top shoe. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Protect your ankle. You gotta yeah, protect yeah, your money strap. makers. Yeah, mm -hmm. true. Protecting true my ankles, protect your knees, protect your back. To me, those are the biggest three things that causes downfall in NBA guys' career. So you gotta protect your money makers. And for me, you know, growing up with the Air Force Ones, the A1s, and strap on the back, you know, I wanted to be like my older brothers when I first got, got a pair. You know, I was 14 years old when I first got my pair of Air Force Ones, red and white joints with the red swoosh. Uh, <laughs> couldn't tell me nothing, man. <laughs> couldn't tell me nothing, you know what I mean? So I'm like, all right, 
But as I as I grew up and, and got more into basketball, that's all I was wearing were high top shoes. I had a pair of David Robinson Nikes. You remember the air yeah, pump joints? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a pair of them, and they were a high high shoe that protect your ankles. Mm -hmm. So that was my main thing. I got to protect my money makers. You know, you only could do but so much with your knees. I only could put so many uh, uh, ace bandages on or knee sleeves on or whatever. But for my feet, I got to protect my feet. And so them Air Ones, I still, matter of fact, hold up, let me do this for you. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> I see in, 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 his, in his high school um, coaching, JL, so you got she with the all white joints on the on the bench with the crispy whites. Oh, crispy those white. are yeah, right yeah, throw them away right after those. Yeah, those are hard, man. Those are hard. Oh, yeah, these yeah. joints right here, the last game I played in these was game five. When wow. we won. Hold I them up a little I bit. Hold, not, hold them up a little bit more. Wow. I have not wow. put this shoe on since game five. Wow. That's that's one you have to go off on Medvedenko. Hey. Yeah, classic. <laughs> A1. You know, I, I, I always got to have them on set. You yeah. know what I mean? That's that's just how it is. Yeah. That's right. what's up. So that in that case, then, then practicing in Tim's was nothing for you then. Yeah. That's like <laughs> well, well, the reason the reason why sometimes I would practice in Tim's, no matter in in high, I well, I only could do it in high school or professional, was because I might have come been coming back off an of ankle injury. And mm -hmm. to me, Timberlands help with your ankles, like the three quarters. Mm -hmm. You tie them three quarter boys up Fresh tight, butters. and and it helps you with the whole classic heel toe. And I know it did for me. So like sometimes, okay, I feel like. Damn, if I could play in these heavy ass Tim's. Yeah, your cats would be which crazy. Is heavier than A1s. <laughs> if I could play in these heavy ass Tim's with this bad ankle, then all right, I could play. I'm good. So sometimes, yeah, I, I would. I mean, it wasn't a lot. Yeah, yeah. But okay. I would practice in, a, in Timberland's head and there. Yeah, I would, it was I would. Just, just for that ankle support. Okay. J JL, so I'm inspired, man. I might like, come out of retirement in some fresh butters <laughs> as soon as this yeah, social distancing is over. I'm going to LA Fitness, boy. <laughs> New, I'm new idea. I'm, 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 I'm going to put fitness. me on. I'm about to, I'm I'm about about to go up. Pushing and rap. Yeah, I'll leave that to you. I'll have you chase me around with my light sneakers. For real, man. For real. <laughs> um, she just closing this thing out, man. You know, how, how do you want to be remembered by the fans? For the younger kids that, that never seen you play. Well, what do you want, you know, Rasheed Wiles' legacy to be uh, in the game? Um, for, for me, don't mistake the passion with the bad attitude that they say. As far as with me, with my technicals and this and that, it's just the passion of the game. Now, I will say some of my technicals, yes, I did deserve. I was uh, uh, kind of over extra with the referees, no matter cussing at them or, you know, certain gestures. But that was early in my career. And later in my career, it came to the point where when I knew they was cheating and all this other shit and I'm calling it out, that's when I knew like, okay, you see it, you calling it out for what it's for. And this is one of the things that you're gonna be remembered by because that's always gonna be a scandal in professional sports. The same way you had the great baseball scandal in the early 1900s with the with the White Sox. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're yeah. always gonna always going to have that scandal in this sport. And I'm always going to be tied to it because I was telling people beforehand that they out here cheating and mm. this and that. And everybody <laughs> looking at she Wallace like, he crazy. Oh, you crazy. You yeah. anti this. Anti okay. You're right. And came out to light. Yeah. Damn. We so I, I would say more, I, I would just want to be known for more of my, my passion, my love of this game. That's what's up, this man. game of basketball that that we play from day one. What your daddy do with you? Put bought you that Nerf hoop, hung that hung that coat hanger, mm -hmm. folded it up, yeah, hung that coat <laughs> hanger on that door, the joint on the back of the door hoop. in your bedroom, man. Yeah, man. And what you do? Get that aluminum <laughs> foil, aluminum ball. foil first. Yeah, you know I, I mean? did it too. I, we all did yeah. that, man. We had the uh, foam joint. You start getting door. eat out. You know, you foam joint. Yes, sir. Garbage can in the driveway. <laughs> Yeah, the, the milk crate on a light pole, you know, all, all the little things that it, that that. it takes to, <laughs> to do this game and, and to love this game. That's that's what I want to be known for. 
That's or or I should say remember for, excuse me. That's what's up, man. Mm-hmm. Well, see, we, we definitely appreciate the time, man. You dropped yeah, a man. ton of jewels on us. No doubt. Appreciate the time, OG. Everybody in the chat, throw a ball, don't lie in the chat. To oh, don't lie. One last time. <laughs> and uh, let's get technical. So appropriately yes, named, Tales. So let's get technical podcast. Rasheed Wallace, Bonzi Wells. It's a dope show. I definitely yeah. been watching them. Um, shout out my guy Gerald Brown as well, man. And and she definitely be safe in this time, man. You and your family. Oh uh, yeah, no doubt. You too. You know, I hope each one of y'all family members is safe too. I already lost an aunt with this battle. Yeah. A couple of so homies sick. That, so I so that, appreciate that. So man, this this is this is real. I would I would definitely have to say this COVID thing is not a hoax, bro. No, it's not. No, it's not a hoax. It's mm-hmm. it's definitely definitely real. And you know, I I've lost uh as I said an aunt and some of my homies is sick. So make sure y'all be safe out there, man. You know, stay home. Look look at this. Look at this staying home quarantine as a positive thing. Now you're spending more time with your kids, spending more time with your wife or your girlfriend or your husband, brothers, whoever, however it goes, who's with you in your home. Yo, you're spending more time, it's family time. The most high, hey, he does things for a reason. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You can't question why the most high does things. And I guess this is, if you look at this is his way of telling the world, hey, y'all better get back family united. Hit that reset button. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna make sure all y'all cats stay at home. So get back to loving your family. Get back to family orientated things. Absolutely. True story, man. Some messages I share on this channel a lot, man. Rashid no Wallace, ladies yeah, and man. gentlemen, three to the Woo! dome. Ball, don't lie. Both teams play hard. Come Gee, on, thanks, man. thanks again, man. Thanks again, brother. All day, man. Anytime, man. You know, glad that y'all had me aboard. I love talking to the Knicks fans and hey. It's going to happen. Just be patient. Yo, <laughs> yo, I, I appreciate you for, for publicly saying that, that, you know, people are going to come to the Knicks and it's not always all negative from everybody else. Yeah, that's real. Thank you for saying that and pointing out, you know, with Dolan here, people will still come to the Knicks. We just got to do the right thing, put a good thing together. Thank you for saying that. True story, man. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's true. It's true. Appreciate you, Sheet. <laughs> No doubt, no doubt, man. Thanks for having me, man. Make sure all y'all tune in to Let's Get Technical with myself and Bonzi Wells and Gerald Brown. Please, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Yeah, Mods, put that link if you can find to, to Yeah, me. all the Mods, throw the link to the Let's uh, Get the Technical podcast, yeah. um, their Twitter, Instagram, and their YouTube channel as well, man. Yes, sir. All right, she take it easy, brother. Right. Rashid Wallace, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, hey. <laughs> Jay Ellis. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, that's another classic, Jay Ellis. Another yeah, classic, man. man. Another that classic. Cool. Hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Rashid boy. Wallace was in here <laughs> dropping jewels, man. Oh, man. No, another good one, bro. Another that was good cool. one. Let me, um, let, let me get you up in here. Hang on one second, Jay Ellis. We're going to start the phones up. Let the people uh, chime in on this one. An- another gem. Another Knicks Fan TV Nigga Time Show production. You know what I'm saying, Jay Ellis? Hit that thumbs yeah, up on the free boys. You know what time it is, man. You know, you know. You know what it is, man. Yes, sir. Live. Um, so what what you think, man? What, what, give me some of your takeaways from, uh, from tonight's interview. So is, he, he's... I don't know. He's really, really, really down to earth, man. Yeah. I, I think I've been saying that for everybody who's interviewed with us, uh, with, with the exception of one person, which I'll get to. But yeah, really down, really down to earth. Uh, uh, um, shoot, I'm, I'm trying to. <laughs> my mind is flooded. Get back to me, CB. Get back to me. <laughs> All right, hold, hold up, man. Well, you know what? How about the fact that he was a Knicks fan, man? She, that was a good yes. She he was is a, a Knicks, Knicks fan, fan. He and he patterned his game against after Patrick patterned Ewing. it up against uh, 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 with number thirty three, Patrick Ewing, man. Patterned when you think about that, it makes Patrick sense. Ewing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yo, she, she, come on, man. That was one of my favorite players, bro. Favorite non Knicks, yeah, uh, in the past. Penny, she, one hundred percent, one hundred percent, bro. You, I like, you, I, I, I like, I like small guys and shooters and stuff. So I was like, his, bro, his game, I was KJ and. <laughs> but she, the thing about she was his game was so fluid, man. His game yeah. was six ten. He could shoot from, hit it from all three levels. His post up game was filthy, mid range. Then he started hitting the three much more efficiently later on in his career. All in Air Force Ones. <laughs> cra- yeah, man, it's crazy because he only played twenty something games with the Knicks, and 
I really felt like the more I was watching him that year with the 54 win team, the more mm-hmm. I realized, like, yo, this guy is kind of the missing piece because it was just like he just stretched the floor out for everybody. He just made it difficult for, for every defense. And I really wish he was remotely healthy that year because I feel like I love Canby. I love Kenny Martin. My guy, Kirk Thomas, they were yeah. glorious. But like that, that stretch five that can give you defense. That, defense I'm telling you, and, that was the Hibbert equalizer. It wasn't bum ass Bargnani, bro. It was a yeah. healthy, a healthy sheed would have turned the tables on that series. And we Definitely. had Miami in the bag, man. I went to that Adam. game last night, JL. I mean that time, that night, opening night, 2012, and we ran him out the gym. I think we beat him three out of four times that season. We just yeah, had we did. the number, man, and and the vets, you know, sheed and all the vets. They definitely, um, you know, carried this team, you know, or get, they, they just, they gave this team a different dynamic, man. It wasn't yeah. just about, you know, like she was saying, just talking to the young boys and explaining and, and showing him, showing them things that he saw, you know, as a player and, and, and his growth, you know, imparting his growth on that team. So. Yes, especially back in the day too, I feel like the Miami didn't really have the big men to keep up with us. So like the fact that we had, had them in droves, we was able to just kind of, Take advantage of that on every yeah. level. It just worked out. For you. And then we had Melo, of course. You know. And then we had <laughs> Melo. You know, you, you had a you had a MVP season from Carmelo Anthony, who played the, at the four, mm-hmm. his best position. And um, yeah, man, that 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 was that. Man. Yo, I told when when she went to Detroit, man, I told my homies did not believe me, bro. I was like, bro, that is the that is it. Forget all that Lakers super team stuff. I was like, they're going to have a hard time finding that chemistry. Rasheed Wiles was that missing piece for that Laker team. And, and yeah, you know, my they, cousin, mm-hmm. I think my cousin was on that too, because my cousin mm-hmm. was a huge Rasheed Wiles fan when he was in Portland. Yep. I, Yo, I that, that, that team was just perfectly team. balanced. You had Chauncey yeah. with the big shot. Everybody to a man could play defense. You know, when Chauncey own. was a floor general, could knock down that three. You had Rip running mm-hmm. off the screens, mid range game. Mid range Reggie. Yeah, you had <laughs> Tayshawn. You had uh, even the bench was nice. I, I believe they had like Lindsey Hunter. Um, I think oh, yeah. they had Eldon Campbell in, in there. Their, their bench was nice as well, man. They had exactly. Delfino. I think Delfino was on that championship team. Delfino mm-hmm. was good for a three pointer, too. Mm hmm. And they had Ben Wallace. Oh, the next defensive coming player of the year. Of next coming with Dennis Robin over there. Defensive <laughs> player of the year. And he was built like a house. <laughs> yeah, yo. Speaking of which, anybody what? was going to fight Ron Artest, it would be ben <laughs> That Wallace. was the matchup. That, that was, the, was matchup. the matchup. Like she said, you wanted to see that hockey matchup. Ben that was Wallace versus a true warrior, Ron Artest. Test. Oh, that was man. the one to see. That that would have been a bloodbath, Jails. <laughs> that would have been a bloodbath. That would have been a blood. Uh, oh you know what? When I was watching that Miles of the Palace, bro, first off, it was it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Uh, the the most memorable thing was number one. Ron Artest jumping into the stands. Number two, Steven Jackson threw a haymaker on one of them dudes in the stands. So the two of them are tussling. Then, you know, it turned into a melee from a melee to like a Hollywood production because the cameraman on the court is now following all the action. You know, like after that, they started to, you know, in, in most sports, when bad things happen, they start to show the crowd or pan away. This game, this was ESPN, I believe. They were showing everything. So I remember when, you remember when J- Jermaine O'Neal caught the dude on the court? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when he hit him with like the sliding, like M. Bison joint. Yeah, was, man. It was like people jumping up in the air and punching people. And bro, I was like, what is crazy. happening? Now, man? A- absolutely. It was pandemonium. Oh my gosh. I didn't even see when it happened. My boy called me and was like, yo, are you watching ESPN? I was like, I'm traveling. Oh, no, He's like, I was, I was get home. Live, bro. Watch ESPN. Yeah. I was like, yo, what? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I was watching live, bro. That, that was crazy, man. That, absolutely crazy. Um, we're going to hear from Ron from Baltimore in a second. Salute to everybody in the chat. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Let's check in on our chats. I haven't checked in on the people in a minute. Um, salute to everybody in the chat once again. Got a ton of super chats in here, Jails. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Shout out. A ton, yo. Um, I'm gonna just name the people. Just shout out to everyone who who sent us a super chat. El yeah, Capitan, really yeah. real. Robert Paris, Will from LI, Ty Morris, my guy Ty Dre Holiday. Thank you, Michael Parker. Much appreciated. Stephen yeah, Weeks, Jack, Chrissy, Payback Carter. Thank you. Cashmore eighty seven and Samir is here. I'll go ahead yeah. and, and read yours, uh, JLs. Yeah. Also shout out to Craig Williams. 
And also shout out to uh, Mr. Durante for the super chat. Shout out to you guys, man. Absolutely, man. All right, let's hear it from um let's hear it from Ron. Let's get Ron in here, get his thoughts on the interview. Ron, how you feeling, man? Hey man, that was a great interview. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Thanks, man. I needed that. I Appreciate needed it. that. Appreciate it, man. Um I remember when she uh, Mike Woodson put him in the game uh, at the end of the game, and he's like, you want to play? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he made, like, two or three threes in a row. Yeah. Yes, sir. Chip! I remember that. <laughs> um, I, I just, I just, I'll leave you guys with this. I, I promised you guys, I, I posted the Nick T. Yes, yes, and... Six. Yep, go ahead, because we're we going to have two, Charlie two Ward thousand. on this Thursday. We're going to be talking about that series, man, so thanks for reminding me. Go ahead. Yeah, man, I posted it. CP and JL is for YouTube. On YouTube, so Nick's Heat, Game 6, mm-hmm. full game, and, I, and I'll, 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 this is all I want. I'll call you guys in a few weeks after you have a chance to watch it, and we'll break it down. All right, no doubt, man. Yeah, like I said, we're going to have Charlie Ward on this next Thursday, Thursday, a week from today. Today's Thursday, right? A week from today, we're going to have Charlie Ward on. So we're going to go through that series um, and and, and talk to that one as well, man. So appreciate the reminder, Ron. Definitely appreciate it, bro. All right, man. Yes, sir. Take it easy, man. Yes, sir, JLs. Um, Charlie Ward, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, man. Third, well, we got two guests. Jay. We got two guests next week. I was Ooh. like, I was wondering. I was like, are you trying to hold the other one? I was nah, I mean, we might as well let the people know. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk Knicks and Kicks with Langston Galloway, man. This Tuesday night, Langston Galloway is coming through. Detroit Pistons guard, former Nick Langston Galloway is coming through on Tuesday. And then Charlie mm-hmm. Ward Thursday, Jails. Yeah, man. Charlie Ward Thursday, man. They want to come talk to the people. Stream. You know? The, the quarantine stream, they want to come talk to the people. And so we just got to off up our platform. You know what I'm saying? Boom. That, that's right. just it, man. That's just it. So uh, salute to Charlie Ward. Salute to Langston Galloway. Definitely looking forward to that. Yeah, um, salute O. Richardson for a super chat as well. Shout out to you, to o, man. Salute to O. Dog as well, man. Salute to O. Dog. Um, yeah, man, that, that, was a, that was a great interview. Um, I'll read some of the... Uh, it comments Cashmore eighty seven says this show goes from strength to strength. Great work, guys. UK fans showing love. So our UK people. Cheers all to right. everybody in the UK uh supporting us, man. All over the world, wherever you guys are at, man. We definitely appreciate you guys. Um let's see, another chat from Michael Parker says salute. Just a basic salute, man. You know, Michael Parker. Uh he's doing well too, JL. So I uh emailed him to check up on him. Make sure everything is uh, going right in these times. So, Michael Parker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. Yo, shout out to Mike. Mike hit me up, actually. Uh, so, mm-hmm, yo, shout mm-hmm. out to Mike, man. Always checks up on your boy. Much love to you, Mike. Absolutely. Uh, El Capitan, Ball Don't not Lie, Respect. We got Really Real said, uh, keep it up. Robert Paris, Orange and Blue for Sheet. NY was highly desirable. And and how about the fact that he he, he did, the, the rumors were true. He wanted to be a Nick in 04. Yeah. He, he wanted, wanted to, to come in 04. In 04. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. He's like, Listen, Isaiah was trying to do what he could, too, Cause that's that's when we started going down, right? Because so what happened in oh Ewing Houston was resigned for the hundred. Yeah, Go Ewing ahead. was gone. We signed Houston. We traded Spree for Van Horn. In yeah, the that was ooh. traded Spree for Van Horn. Remember Spree and Dolan that fell out. So we traded yeah. Spree for Van Horn before the deadline. We make the Marbury trade. We trade Charlie Ward, a bunch of assets, Howard Isley. We get back Marbury, Penny Hardaway, uh, and, and, and so we did that deal. Then he was trying to get cheap. He was also after, remember when Isaiah was just hot after Eric Dampier? Remember that, bro? Remember, Eric Dampier? I yeah, remember, remember that. Eric Dampier, he was playing for the Heat. He played for Golden State. He played for Dallas. Mm-hmm. But he had like one good playoff series, and you know Yo, Isaiah gets high for that. for that. Yeah, Isaiah's good, <laughs> he's for, good that. for that. So he Jerome. was ready to give him a Jerome James deal that yeah. he couldn't refuse. Eric, yeah, Eric Dampier was was that hot candidate. Um, but anyway, but yeah, he wanted Sheed. They couldn't make it work. They needed to involve a three team deal, a third Damn. team to get the deal done. So they ended up trading Van Horn mid season. And getting um, Najee Muhammad and Tim Thomas, Mr. Fugazi Tim, the himself. two man, as my friend calls him. <laughs> Tim, the two man. Thomas. So you know, you could have had a prime sheet, or you oh get my you know, Najee Muhammad and, and, 
and a Tim Thomas who might give you thirty one night, give you five the next. You know, maybe top, yeah, prime prime sheet with Morberry. That might yeah, have been man. Right, yo. Kelf, you know, just a couple. Just we were this close, yeah, this close. Yeah, you know, prime sheet with Larry Brown. Yeah, mm. Eric Dampier. Isaiah was heavy, heavily invested in getting Eric Dampier, man. They wanted him for the mid level, I think, or or maybe even like a larger deal. And uh, thank God that didn't work out because he he came back to life. Oh. Oh, shout out uh, to whoever just bought a Ninja P shirt. Shout out to you. Okay, salute. We sell we selling merch right now as we yeah. okay, good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. Um, Roll from LI says that 2012 13 will always hold a special place in my heart. Thanks for um your part in that, Rasheed Wallace. Salute to Will. Um, Ty Mar says JL is on fire tonight with the salient questions, making interviews great. With great the job. what questions? Salient, salient questions. Okay, <laughs> means it was good, very good on, okay. on point. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what it means, like it. man. So, so good stuff. Uh, an, another terrific interview. Definitely want to thank um, Rasheed Wallace. Let's get technical podcast. Make sure you check that podcast out, man. It's very good. I listened to the one so far with um, Damon Stoudemire. They had on, so they were going back on the Portland days. Uh, sometimes they don't even have guests, but the Stephen Jackson episode was good. Um, okay. Uh, they had Nate Burleson on from the NFL. It's a very good show, man. Shout out my guy Gerald Brown, who was also on this show as well. Um, he's a co-host on on that show, and, and so um, that yeah, that's their podcast. Let's get technical. So definitely gonna check. Yeah, definitely check that out. Right yeah, there. Jay Ellis, man, good show. Um, let let's go ahead and and wrap up. Still yeah, right. man. Salute, how, salute. How about, how about she? <laughs> I'm just going back to these takeaways. The okay. Air Force ones and the well, you know, it, it makes sense. Ankle Obviously, support, man. Take your ankle support, but Tim. But his foot was broken, so I'm thinking, how much support <laughs> would you get? Because you. That's, well, you didn't have you had the ankle support, but then you didn't have yeah. soles on your feet. That's that's just mileage, man. That's just that, mileage, man. You, yeah, you, I knew you had to have some th- sort of orthotics to be playing in Air Force Ones, bro. You can't just pop them out the box and just be playing. Yeah, you're right. He did say he had the he had the cushion. Yeah, you had to have some custom molding to, to be able to get those to, to even be remotely comfortable. But but that was definitely dope. Um, you know, thought tips could work if if the players buy in. If the players buy into his defensive scheme, Star Tibbs could work. You yeah. Know, I, I thought it, it was great to see him, you know, reflecting on how he wants to impact his high school team. You know, to, to, to really mold them as men and, and the difference in, in in those levels in terms of the passion, the hunger of the game, uh, as opposed to, you know, the NBA. And, and he, he talked about the business side of things lesson he learned that this was a business and, and that even goes back to like what the x-man was talking about man you know you gotta take take care of your family man because it's an ugly business yeah man, at the end of yeah the day. yeah that was that was honorable you know i, I get it too i i get it selfishly i wanted him i want him to say yes i would coach uh, the Knicks players. <laughs> yes Knicks fans you know? i will coach mitchell robinson yes personally. i will be a uh, mitchell robinson coach and teach him <laughs> all my moves exactly it's, 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 turn around yeah. step back yes I per- I, but you know you, you got you got to honor a, a guy who just cares about his community. True story. As you clearly see, but true story. Yeah. That's just an admirable feat, man. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, had some good praise for Ninja P. Mm-hmm. Yeah, holds Ninja P in high regard as well. So that that was cool. Um, and and he just you know the the overall theme in terms of where we're going is patience, man. And and obviously you know we we can all agree with that, but you know they got to make the proven moves, man stick to a game plan and and just just gotta hope that Leon Rose doesn't hit that panic button and try yeah, to man. Do too crazy with the assets you know I, I agree man I agree I definitely agree I hope Mike hope Mike Miller stays here as well man mm. I hope Mike Miller stays here as well I, 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 even though I didn't like his rotation so much I still I do feel like offensively he, he had something kind of at least you know a system going in. yeah Hopefully, we'll see what happens. We'll see. Absolutely, we'll see. absolutely. You know what? Let me get one more call in here. Let's hear it from Jay Boogie, Jay Ellis, because uh, he, he's, he's been very much uh, a big supporter of our show. Jay Boogie, how All you right. feeling, man? That's my old nickname, too. We're we going to overtime, man. We get, let's get Jay Boogie in here. Jay Boogie, <laughs> what's going on, bro? What's good with the team? How y'all doing? Everybody good and healthy, man? That's good. God yeah, bless man. you all. and hope everybody's right. doing well with their families. Thanks, bro. Hope you're doing the same, man. Salute, man. Hey, just to let you know, Rashid is a personal friend of our first cousin down here in NC. 
Okay. So I don't been around him, you know, before. So let me let you know again, like y'all say, he sound like he's down to earth. He really is on earth ground. Mm. The way he talk about his kids at the high school, he the type guy that will turn down a million dollar contract to be assistant coach because he want to stay with them kids and give them, you know what I'm saying, light to their future. He is like that, you know what I'm saying? And real quick, shout out to my cousin G's Barbershop. But when he was talking about Carolina, how everybody was cool and tight, my man Donald Williams was the MVP the year before when they beat Michigan. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, he stayed mm-hmm. another year. He gave Rashid and Stackhouse and them the key. So when Yo. he was talking about how tight they was at Carolina, you know what I'm saying? They was really, really tight like yeah. that. But Rashid was a three-level ball player. Oh, yeah. He was mm-hmm. a basketball player, a baller, and a killer at the same time, man. Yes, and you had to love him. This past, man. But keep doing what y'all doing. I appreciate what y'all doing for the orange and blue. And nobody doing it like y'all. No other stations, man. Appreciate you know it, Jay. That's why we support y'all to the fullest. Appreciate it, Jay. Appreciate, appreciate it, man. man. That's why we went yeah. into overtime, Jay. Else I knew it was going to be yeah, a good man. call. Jay Boogie comes wow. in and puts some contacts around things. You know, has mm-hmm. a personal story. That's what's up, man. That's that's what OGs do, man. We definitely that's appreciate good, that's, that. That's what we do, De- definitely appreciate that. What was the holes in Rashid's game, yo? Man, what was the hole? That's, that's a good question. Because usually you're like, oh, I like this guy, but. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to me, I, you know, when I was going back and, and doing my research on, on older articles and, and interviews, they had looked at the Portland series, the, the Lakers series, the game seven series against the Lakers and talked about because they, they had missed something like 15 shots in a row. Right. And the um the knock on sheet at that time was. Did, did he really want to be the guy, you know, the closer? Mm. Because part of the problem with that that that, that that Portland team had was they didn't know who too to Too unselfish. Closer. Yeah, yeah. Right? So the knock on him was that he was too unselfish at times. And and so, you know, if if you, you want to think of a weakness, maybe that's it. But as Jay Boogie said, you know, he, this was a three-level score of Jay. Yeah, man. Absolute beast. An Absolutely. Absolute beast, man. But, yeah, you know, based on my research, that that's kind of what – you know, some of the critics had said they even had Steve Kerr. I read one interview and Steve Kerr was quoted because um, Steve Kerr played with him for about a year, I think. And, and Steve Kerr was saying, um, you know, he 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 didn't really relish being the guy like a Tim Duncan or a Kobe, how they took on, you know, that mm. burden. So, you know, maybe he could have been more assertive in closing. Right. Okay. The team. That makes sense. Like yeah. me, the guy call for the ball more because right. be right, I am the best player of the ball. Yeah. yeah, but he, he's he's naturally he's a humble guy. Yeah, even with all the skills. So, yeah, uh, I, I, and, yeah. And, and someone else in in the uh, in the chat said the text obviously didn't didn't do yeah. no good because as Tim Donaghy said in his book, the disgraced referee that was betting on the game was that they had it out for she. You know, they they game planned for him mm-hmm. because they felt like they didn't really want to deal with him, and so obviously they're gonna have a quick trigger with him. Yeah, and he, he didn't come in. He didn't come in the league as a guy who was like angry and getting texts. He kind of developed over time. He only had like, one technical in high school, and that yeah. was for hitting the stanchion because his high school coach, the same Bill Ellaby that he talked about, would say that, you know, do what you do, but if you miss a dunk when you could have had an easy layup, I'm going to take you right out the game. And it happened to Sheed. And that was the mm. first technical that he picked up because he missed a, a, a dunk. He punches the stanchion. And he caught a technical for it. Damn. And, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he caught, he caught a technical for it because he knew he was about to sit out the rest of the game. <laughs> that was his one high school technical. So, yeah, obviously, you know, it didn't do him any good when when you establish that type of reputation and you have the, the referee's mercy. So, uh, yeah. I'm sure that didn't help his team too much either. But yeah. You, but you know what, bro? And, and last story, we, we were supposed to end this show like 15 minutes ago, but yeah, right. this interview <laughs> is good. I'm just, you know, Basketball things are just combo. coming. I, yeah. As you kind of, you know, calm it down, things kind of come back to you. Um, and he had mentioned the Tim Donaghy thing at the end. And him, him, he, he almost beat up Tim Donaghy, bro. I don't know if you remember that. Mm. In the 2000-2001 season, she, there was an incident where she picked up oh. where she, um he threw the ball at a, a ref, kind of like yeah. give it to him. But Tim yeah. Donaghy took it the wrong way at, and felt like he was throwing it at the ref. Tease I up saw somebody Sheed. in the chat said, ask him about that. <laughs> yeah, tease up Sheed. 
after the game, he meets Tim Donaghy in the parking lot, and they almost throw hands. League ends up suspending him for seven games. Yeah. And then, what do you know? Tim Donaghy gets bagged for betting on games. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that's Look at that's that. a victory, man. Exactly. So That's, that's a victory. So, so it's, it's funny because sometimes people, people, uh, people react crazy. And people wonder why you're acting so crazy, and they yep. don't really know the underlying story. And he, he and Rashid would tell you, he said, "Yo, I act, I act crazy when I know they're cheating." Yep. <laughs> yep. He, he knew there was some funny business going on. Yeah. Man. So he knew. He knew there was some funny business. So uh, he's yeah. like, "Yo, meet me, at, meet me in the parking lot. We gonna go <laughs> handle this." About to because fold you're up this game. Tim Donaghy, man, trying to get that come up. Yeah, he was about to fold them up like some slacks, man. But, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. again, he, he, he came out on top, man. NBA champion, all star, multi time all star, mm-hmm. and, and now he's following his passion and, and imparting his wisdom on the youth, man. So definitely full circle. Glad to see that, man. So anyway, Jails, let's let's go ahead and get out of here, bro. Go ahead and sign out. Yeah, salute, 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 salute to everyone. Uh, uh, New episode dropped, KOT Show. Shout out to my guy Fritz, man. Working hard um, getting these episodes out, trying new formats. It's been like a a journey figuring that out. A new episode is up of the Nick of Time Show. Pretty good episode. Definitely check that out. Um, It's not on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play yet, but I will put those up on those platforms as well as we try to figure out, you know, how to move differently through his COVID stuff. Um, also, uh, check the merch as well. We got some some Knox merch, Ninja P merch as well. Thanks for whoever bought we'll, we'll, we'll that. Uh, all types of merch at thenicktimeshow.com. And also, shout out to my guy, Ken, man. Shout out to my guy, Ken, who are holding mm-hmm. on the vlogs. Uh, dropped part three of the blueprint. No, he's not whole, but he's, he wrote three parts of the blueprints of Rebuilding Nick. So definitely check that out as well on the Nick Time Show. That's all. Back to you, CP. Sir, another one in the book, Shales. Great job, mm-hmm. man. And uh, salute to everybody for watching once again. YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, Twitter. Everybody for watching and supporting us, man. We definitely appreciate it. Thank you again, Rasheed Wallace, for touching down on the show. Remember, um, upcoming shows Tuesday night, Langston Galloway, 9 30 p.m. Eastern Time. Thursday, Charlie Ward, I think it's 7 o'clock. So be on the lookout for the notification. Hit the notification bell. I think Charlie Ward is early. It's going to be early at JL, so it's going to be about 7 o'clock. So make sure okay. you guys keep it locked. Like I said, man, it's going to be, this is a grassroots movement. We need mm-hmm. your support. All the Super Chats, much appreciated. Nick Central, O Skrilla, I saw your Super Chat. Thank you for uh, the donation. But you could also support us for free. Share these videos. Hit that yeah. thumbs up button for you boys. And subscribe to the channels, Knicks Fan TV, Nick of Time Show. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, man. Like once again, all the regulars, thanks for tuning in. All the mods, thanks for helping out. Knicks Fan TV Dave, shout out Fro Magnum for throwing the highlight packages together. Shout out, yeah, man. John Talento, Pranav, all the regulars, Kent, appreciate it. Michael Park, appreciate it, man. We will see you guys um, sometime over the weekend just for a check in. But if not, Charlie uh, Langston Galloway, Tuesday night, 9.30 p.m. We'll see you guys, man. Peace.